Uh, welcome to the May 25th, 2023 meeting of the Finance Committee in Concord, Massachusetts. We have a quorum and I call the meeting to order. We do have two new members tonight and I'm just gonna ask each of them to introduce themselves briefly and then we will move on to the main agenda. Start with you. Kazi Sigurzaman, um, first year joining this uh, committee. And your background a little bit of sure. why we want you <laughs> and why you want to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, so, yeah, so my background, you know, I'm a um, uh, professor of finance um, at the Brandeis University and uh, uh, previous experience in uh, real estate, commercial real estate. Excellent. Carolyn Reed, uh, this is my first term. I've been involved in town for a while. I'm an attorney. And in one of my former lives, I was a utility rate analyst. I love to analyze data. And I like to say, throw me the numbers. And that's one reason why I'm on the FinCom. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Our uh, second, well, this is our first meeting following um, annual town meeting on April 30th and 31st. Um, so we will be reorganizing our board with new officers. And I will present a slate and then I will welcome uh, someone to uh, move that slate and then second and then we'll vote. Does that make sense? So the slate of nominations include Parashar Patel as chair, Eric Dahlberg as vice chair, uh, Lois Wassoff, who's online, as the uh, guideline chair, and Lindsay Liss, who's here today, um, as the vice chair of guidelines, D. Ortner as clerk, and Don Kupka as the vice clerk. So if someone would like to move that, any I'll discussion? Make I'll make a motion to that effect. Thank you, Mark Amrath. I will second it. Thank you, Suresh. Suresh, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Lewis okay. went on camera, so I don't know what that means. What do you say? What? What? No. Lewis went off camera. I didn't know whether. Oh, no. I just stopped my video for a minute because the dog was whining. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I believe that was unanimous, and move. I'm trying to get off camera. I understand, but the camera follows you around now. <laughs> Just for all new members, there are three cameras. One's there, one's there, and the other one is up there. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. I think. <laughs> uh, it's an honor, I think. Uh, we've got a good team, so I think we're we're good. And you know, we'll. One of my mantras: I've been on the committee for about five years, and I think we've improved the way we work together and with the town and others year over year. And we'll try to build on that. Last year was a little bit tumultuous. Is that right? Is that the right word? Hmm. Um, hopefully, hopefully this year will be a little bit less tumultuous. Um, and so we'll go from there. I'm not up. All right. Um, First public comment, um, we've got Mary here from the select board and I think Linda's there and a couple other folks just open it up for public comment if anybody would like to speak, Mary. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Mary Hartman, I'm on the select board. This year I will be the liaison uh, from the select board to the finance committee. Uh, this is unusual. It's usually the chair who is the liaison, and I am not the chair of the select board. But because I have experience on the finance committee, having been a member and having been the chair, we thought it would be best if I acted as the liaison. So I'll be the conduit uh, between our two committees. I won't be at every meeting because there's a conflict with the um, board of assessors meeting, but I'll be in contact with the uh, the officials that have been elected tonight and anyone else um, who has anything they want to let me know and we will be sharing our common concerns so thank you great thank you mary looking forward to working with you and the rest of the select board um anybody else 
Public comment? I don't see anybody's hands raised. So let's go to the next item. Discussion and approval of committee assignments. So thank you everybody for providing input and raising hands uh, around the committee liaisons. Um, I got the last of the feedback yesterday. What I'd like to do, if it's okay with everybody, uh, Gail, are you prepared to share it or should I share my screen? If you wanna share, you can go okay. right ahead. Okay, Let, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call it up here with you. Okay, so. Try this again. Okay. Share the screen. There we go. I did an older one, but that's okay. Yeah, I did do an older one. Um, we're going to make this larger for everybody at home as well. And there's, sorry? There's just, yeah. And here too, right? <laughs> yeah. So let's let's do, can, can you guys see this? I'll read them off here. Yeah, I can see them. So we had, we had a number of folks that were on the committee last year that were that had that were liaisons last year. And I'll just sort of show you the list here. Um, and I think one of the things that the, we talked about last year was actually cutting back on the number, both the number of committee liaisons that we have, as well as rethinking the way we interact with those committees. Uh, to make sure it's not a burden for us. And so you can see last year we had a number of committees, particularly the ones down here at the bottom, that we decided this year based on input that probably not necessary to have um, or liaisons on. And so I'll show you the list here. I'm going to just get rid of this. And I think we're, we cut out four or five committees that we decided were not necessarily key to having liaison. So what we're down to is the select board. And traditionally, it's been the chair and the vice chair. So I put without asking Eric, I think I put him down as also uh, as the liaison for CPS and regional high school D and Don have kindly agreed to share those responsibilities. Um, middle school building committee Suresh and Chris Suresh's professional background and Chris has been on this for a while, and we thought continuity-wise that that made a lot of sense. Um, Minuteman Vocational, Don and D, I think a little bit of a role reversal, primary, secondary type thing, but I'll leave that up to you guys to figure those out. Uh, Lindsay was very passionate about the planning board, so you got your <laughs> you, you got your vote, and Eric, I think, also had, had suggested that as one or two, so I kind of put you guys down to tag team a little bit. Um, we'll talk about CPC yet. I think we should have a discussion about whether it's worth having a liaison for the Board of Assessors. Uh, we'll come back to that. Eric, I think Public Works Act was actually your number one, if I'm not mistaken. So I put you down there as well. Um, and Kathy has kindly agreed to do housing, affordable housing. The good news is that uh, Ray Stevens, who is a member of the FinCom, Ray Andrews, is going to continue. He is a... He was. He's not. He was. He dropped off, but he has a passionate interest in affordable housing, as you know. And so he's going to be proactive with those committees. So I'm relatively confident that if you need assistance or miss something, et cetera, or want to dig into something, Ray would be more than happy to help you. Um, and quasi given his background in commercial real estate, I had a conversation and thought it would be really helpful given that we want, at least as we'll talk about later, one of the goals I think we have is to foster revenue growth in town, right? Through development and stuff. And having somebody with that kind of background as a liaison, I think it'd be very helpful. What of assessors might work with that too? Yep. So we'll talk about that as well. And I know Peggy wants to remain active on all her FinCom duties. And so I put her down to tag team <laughs> with Quasi. She actually wanted to be on three or four committees. I had to pull her back. <laughs> Uh, and then Carlin has kindly agreed to, to liaise with the recreation committee. Uh, the last four committees we had folks last year. I don't recall a single report from the regional emergency context communication center. Um, I don't remember library. So it kind of didn't make sense to have liaisons there. The municipal light board, we did have somebody, but you know, at the end of the day, got a lot of feedback that we don't really control their budget. Everything's on the rate payers. Nothing's on the taxpayers. Didn't make a whole lot of sense to have somebody to go there and listen in and stuff because it 
doesn't really involve us. So if folks disagree, we should talk about it. That was the logic. Uh, and then the same thing on the retirement board. Um, they're very technical. They do affect ultimately um, town finances, but it's very technical, actuarial based, et cetera. And again, not sure what. So, so I, co I covered correct. the retirement board yep. um, two years ago. Two years ago, I forget which. Um, and back then, the markets were so, I mean, basically you're looking at your actuarial liabilities right. and your funding. So the markets were so good that there was no need uh, to concern ourselves with any um, financial liability. A periodic check-in might might be worthwhile just to. Yeah, I think I um, I think all four of those boards, um, I mean, emergency communication, library, municipal light board, retirement board, um, can the information can come to us through Gale, through the town. Those are all, um, you know, her responsibilities. And um, when there's an issue, you know, she I think she can bring it to us without us observing. It's it's really more of a town, um, you know, a town department mm -hmm. compared to some of the others. That was a little bit of my thinking because Gail, are you on the retirement board? You observe, et cetera, right? And you, uh, I'm actually a voting member of the oh, retirement board. I'm the town's appointed. So that was That's a thought cool. process, Kathy. Right. right? Covered. Um, other comments, concerns? Harlan. I know I'm the newbie and I'm supposed to be quiet, but I'm not going to be. Um, I've been watching all three, well, the AC rec, the light board and the retirement board. AC rec, interesting stuff happening there. Uh, there's a question about whether Concord is gonna continue in this consortium. They're trying to hire an executive director. That will affect our budget. I would recommend that we at least have someone who looks at it once in a while. Light board, they're, they're looking for uh, implementing the, um, the AMS program, the time of use program. That will also affect rates, true, but it, it affects us as well. And the retirement board, they just had a meeting and um, they're considering a, a maneuver that I'm not totally sure I understand, but it could have a $300,000 impact on our town budget. If you don't want to sign a liaison, fine, but if I see something and I happen to be watching those three in particular, I'll let you know. Well, thank you. And so that, so I do want to remind folks, these are what we're talking about our official liaisons from the finance committee. Just because there's not a liaison to any of these other committees doesn't mean any of us as individuals, if you want to attend, happy to attend. However, let's also continue the habit of, hey, I'm here not as a member of the FinCom, uh, when you're providing statements or comments or input to, to them in their public forum. So I'm probably, if you're happy to attend, go right ahead. I think retirement board, clearly we've got Gail as a official channel. So, um, so that's, that, so that's perfectly fine. I think if folks want to do it, that's great. But from an official capacity perspective, I'd like to limit this. Cause remember one of the things we're trying to do is, for future members, so I'm roping in John, for example, for a second term, <laughs> would be helpful to reduce the reduce the uh, perceived workload, right? So let's turn to the board of assessors. Um, what are folks' thoughts? Again, this is one where I'm looking to Gail, and to the extent that there's questions about the overlay and et cetera, is that something that you can report back to us in a timely manner, or does it? What's your sense of whether we need? an official liaison here? I can definitely report back. And as needed, I can have Meredith come to a meeting and walk through what is happening. The, the town assessor, I could have her come to a meeting if there are specific questions that individuals have. Does that make sense? I would just say their process is, is quite, it's rigorous, but it's fixed. You know, they have to follow certain rules and and then there are results that are reported. So we can watch, but it's not like some of these other boards where you can watch and also have uh, some sort of influence or impact. Now, this past year, they microphone, did- Microphone, microphone, microphone. Oh, 
<clears throat> this past year, they did do their three year reevaluation. And so that's in the bag now. If anybody is interested in watching, you could probably get it on Zoom, or excuse me, you could probably get it on um, Minuteman, yeah. Minuteman, yeah, MNM, MMN. Is that the right acronym, MMN? Um, and um, it's worth watching because it does go into the detail about how they go about doing it and the valuations and everything is two years in arrears. So they were looking at values in 2021 sure. uh, on their assessments. So that I thought was also pretty, that also was interesting. <laughs> Uh, Mary and then Gail and then Mary might Chris. Be saying what I was going to say. So I, I was going to say, oftentimes for the liaison to the select board, is a lot of the assessor information comes up through mm -hmm. the select board and they do make okay. presentations. And when they get to the tax classification or adopting any other items, that does go up through the select board for review and approval. So that's another avenue. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, as, as, as Gail just mentioned, it is the select board that sets the, um, the rate for the year. It's, that's one of our responsibilities. Um, but this year, the, um, the select board is, I believe, going to actively look at um, tax exemptions. So there's going to be a lot more going on with setting the rate than just your normal uh, work as far as, you know, what are we spending and divided by the assessed value of the real estate in town. So that's going to be quite complicated, and we're trying to get a head start on that. So the Finance Committee wants to be um, aware of that, okay, because we'll want you to weigh in. when yeah, we I guess so. so I'm hoping that the board... <laughs> Between you and Gail, can let us know when you'd like us to weigh in. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, well. Okay, then we can we we can wait until it's done, or you could be part of the actual observation. It's up to you. Observation. Yeah. So let me pose the question to anybody here on the finance committee. I don't want to get too. If there's a volunteer, I'm not opposed to it, but at the same time. Just want to be mindful of everybody's time. So I just, Kathy and the, yeah, I just want to make sorry. a comment again, having having been um, an observer. It's it's our revenue, and that's that's an important issue for us to be looking at in terms of raising revenue uh, in the town. I, uh, Anyway, I I think there. I think we have to be aware of what their pool is for rebates and what the volume of requests is. I mean, that's that's really the balance. Um, are we, are we going to have enough money? Are we not going to have enough money? Uh, and I'm assuming that when you say you're going to be looking at the tax exemptions. Um, it's to not grant more. Actually, it is. It's, it, to, it it's is. to mitigate it's the impact of the middle school on property taxes for low income or low asset populations. And that's, we've got two, okay, we're getting into it. Yeah, let, let, so let's back up here. Let's just focus on whether okay. we need a liaison. And when you say observe, observe is one thing, provide input into are you looking for actual substantive input into how the redistribution should occur? No. Well, the role okay. of the finance committee is always observer. Exactly. Right, right, so that's right. my point, okay. though, is that that can be reported back. Or if you want our official input at some point, you can come to us, right? Okay. Well, Chris, you were going to say something? No, I was going to say, um, yeah, the, that exemptive process will be interesting, and I'm sure, sure we'll be asked about it. So I think it, however you want to do it, we should have some knowledge of it. In general, the framework that you propose, I think, makes sense. And I think people just have to realize it's going to be fluid. Right? Sure. As we go through the year, other issues pop up and we, you know, we redirect our focus depending upon what's going on. So I think, you know, you just have to put kind of a line in the sand now, but right. it'll, it'll move and change depending on what's going on, what's hot and what's not. Right. So it's just a, a way to start. Yeah. yeah. Carlin and then Carlin, and then we'll come back. If you look and then I want to move on for a volunteer to, to do the liaison slash observer. I'm happy to do that. It will not conflict with my assignment with recreation because recreation is Tuesday. This is a Thursday meeting. Thank so you. What if you wish? Kathy? 
I withdraw my Okay, comment. so so let, I'd prefer let's just go through Gail and Mary, the board can help us give us notice and we will provide input, okay? And if we need a more permanent member, then Carlin has, uh, has volunteered. But until then, let's just go with updates. So I will circulate this back to Gail. We've got the official um, <clears throat> liaison team here and we will move on to the next agenda item. There we go. Okay, let me stop sharing. Uh, or actually, do we want to put the agenda up there? Were you? Did you have the agenda up there before? I Gail? did not. Let's throw that up there. Sorry, Carmen is next. Yeah, Carmen is next. I don't know if she's signed I in. Have not seen her sign in yet. Okay. okay. So let's go to the next agenda item, and maybe you can go forward to the well. We don't the chairs breakfast. So long story short. I think most everybody's aware there's a monthly breakfast of the chairs of the various committees. The first of May one was there a couple of weeks ago. Peggy uh, kindly asked me to go instead of attending herself as the chair. <laughs> I sent around a quick summary of uh, the reports out from the from the various committees. I'm not going to go over those. Hopefully everybody's read them. Um, but I think just color wise, there was lots of conversations about annual town meeting participation rates, what can we do to make them better, what, et cetera. Um, you guys, I think, have all read some of the comments and letters that have come in to the bridge about do we need annual town meeting, do we change them, et cetera. Of course, none of that was discussed officially or anything, but definitely commentary there as well on that piece of it. So just wanted to provide a little bit more color around that. Um, anybody have any questions that on any Thing that was reported back by the various committees. Oh, you know, one thing actually, let's go back. We forgot CPC. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at D because <laughs> she was a CPC liaison last year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not asking you to do it again. Oh, uh, but do we have somebody for CPC? We don't actually. So that was the one thing I forgot before moving on. I'm glad I remembered. You're going to find that that happens to me occasionally. Um, there was yellow on the version I had. We don't need it. Well, I, so let's put that out there. I, I think we do, given the magnitude. That's why there was a yes there, but we don't have a volunteer. So it's actually such a good committee to <laughs> to you've got, watch. You've got the floor. Go ahead, Dee. Uh, uh, it's just it's just a good committee to watch and see the interaction of the members of the committee and their deliberations and the requests that come in. Um. I, I, I would highly recommend somebody to volunteer for it. I would, I'd be but happy I think to volunteer. I'm busy. I did it the, my first year. All right. Thank so you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We always send them former CPC chairs. Yeah. Both Dee and I have done. Um, okay, perfect. So thank you very much. We now have a complete slate. We'll see if they're going to do this middle school fields. We'll and see. Burton is the chair this year. Who? Burton. Mm -hmm. It was the chair of planning board last yeah. year, I think. Um, yeah, you, were you going to go ahead and share the agenda, or do you want me to? Um, I can pull. I didn't have it. Yeah, pulled I'll, up. I'll pull it up. Historically. Sorry. Okay. Um, I just provide. We just did number six, number seven. Um, so you guys all saw the letter to the editor. Of the, Harry just joined. Oh, perfect. Harry's joined. Perfect. So you guys all saw the letter to the editor. Um, I didn't get any feedback from, I got feedback from some folks. So thank you for that. Um, I don't know if they're going to publish it or not, but I'm going to just open it up and see if folks had any questions or comments that about the letter. Carlin. What's the purpose of the letter? Is it to prolong, prolong the argument? It's it to get a point across because it, it, I think it will detract from the business we have going forward. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. It was actually to help educate folks um, in terms of what we do, why we do what we do, and point out that, in fact, you know, folks can come in and talk to us throughout the course of the year, encourage them to do that. Um, and, you know, from the letter writer's perspective, it wasn't clear that my comments, whether they were official finance committee stances or not. And so to make it very clear that I did not speak out of turn, it was actually finance committee 
a position, as she said, and to make that very clear, basically. It was to clarify for town residents what I said and why I said it. Kathy, take a microphone, please. Thanks. I have a question, not a comment on the on, on the letter itself. This committee went before the town and said, we have a long-term mismatch going on. So my question is, where do we see ourselves at this point vis-a-vis -vis the school committee and the budgeting process and any input that we've given them? <laughs> Um, it, it, where are we? Yeah. So, uh, that's a great question. And we'll talk a little bit as we get into, um, practices, objectives, and what the, what some future meeting agenda items will be, but I'll give you a short answer now. Right. So Alexa and I've had a couple of conversations, uh, to figure out a way so that we can work better together, starting actually with, I think it's the June or July a July. July meeting, we're going to actually have a joint meeting if we can. Now, I've talked about it. We need to confirm the date with Alexa. But for them to come in and educate us around, according to Massachusetts law, how does school budgeting process work? Right, Because I think not all of us, including myself, frankly, know the details. And I think a lot of us believe, rightly or wrongly, that there's money under the cushions if you folks don't see so they're going to come in and explain, hey, that may not that, that may not be the case. On the same token, we're going to use the same meeting to educate them around the guideline process and kind of how we go about setting guidelines, how we go about thinking about our finance committee report to foster that sense of uh, working together, et cetera. And I think we've each agreed that through the course of the year, we would can, we'd have probably more yeah. conversations than we might have had in the past as well, right? I don't think anybody wants a repeat of kind of what's happened last year. At the same time, I think we've got to be mindful. We've got our responsibilities um, and they do too. And, you know, hopefully we can align, but at least if we don't end up aligning at the end of the year, hopefully there's a better understanding of where folks are coming from. That's my personal opinion. Folks might have all their other members might have other thoughts open to them. Is that, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> my thought is that while we in the committee understand our charter, our role in advising and monitoring the health um, of the finances of the town, that is totally opaque and that any time the word school gets said, mm. it's, you know, if, if they said they wanted a $150 million school, it would get approved. That I don't think that people care about the financial impact. It's just, it, it frustrates me. Fair enough. Other uh, comments, thoughts on the letter? Who, who are we to say whether they should be caring or not in, in their opinion, right? If they want to pay higher taxes to support something, who are we to tell them not to do that? We can advise on what we think is fiscally responsible, but if the only 400 people that come out to vote say, I don't believe you. You can be all upset you want, but it's not, well, you can't take the moral high ground. Well, what I'm saying is it's not that they don't believe us. I don't, I don't, they choose to spend the money. Which is their which, right which is as their right. a voter. Yeah. And we are, we need to take a step back and realize we're an advisory committee, right? And so we advise and make an, uh, and put that out and they can agree or disagree. Am I taking our charter in wrong here? No, no, I think that's correct. So let's be mindful. We're talking about the letter. These other larger issues I'm sure we'll be wrestling with through the course of the year. And I know Lois has her hand up, so I'll let Lois go. And who's the second? Amherst. Amherst. Okay, Lois? 
Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I, I, I agree I, with what, um, what's been said about our role as an advisory committee. Um, I, but I think the fact that there is a, a lot of misunderstanding um, out there, um, and I'm not speaking to this particular letter, but I certainly see it in other communications about what the role of the finance committee is, what its responsibilities are and what its goals are. We need to do some more education. And I mean, John's completely correct. We are just an advisory group. Um, we, the, the town, the select board is um, elected and makes recommendations and decisions. The uh, town meeting acts as the, our, our legislature and makes decisions where it's necessary by law. There are ballot questions that are considered and voted on. You know, all we can do is fulfill our responsibility by making sure we're keeping the public informed about what we are finding out and what we are learning because we're in a unique position to know a lot about what's going on because of the amount of information that we, we sift through and the exposure that we get. We will, we're bound by the ultimate decisions and, and maybe Kathy's right that the town will always vote to tax itself more. But at least if we're doing our job, that vote will be made based on actual information. And that's why I think Parashar's letter was a good idea. And that's why I think we need to maintain dialogue with other groups within the, the town particularly the school committee, um, so that the decisions that are ultimately made are made with, are informed decisions made with more information. Thank you, Lois. Amrith, and then we'll move on. Amrith? No, I, I lowered my hand. Lewis uh, said most of what I was going to say, so I'm good. Okay, good. Thank you. And you'll see in a minute, there are some other ideas I'm proposing good. to have to help educate voters and have dialogue, okay? We'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. I'm gonna turn it over now to Eric. Let me stop sharing, Eric. Eric has a brilliant idea. No, it's good, I like it. It's, well, thank you, but it's not my idea. Um, uh, after town meeting, um, I caught some chatter in social media um, uh, where a resident was asking why, um, why our annual report gets mailed out. Um, and she was very thoughtful about it. She wondered, given that it's online, given the um, uh, cost and the, the 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 waste of paper, well, the use of paper, um, why is it necessary to mail it out? And I kind of debated whether to social media is always you know dicey whether to engage or not. But I I reached out and said I'm on the finance committee. I'll find out for you. So I reached out to, to Gail, who was very helpful and shared the, the bylaw language. It's in the bylaw that has to be mailed out uh, so many days ahead of town meeting. And I shared it with this resident. And, and um, again, she was very thoughtful about it. She said, what's the process for getting this changed? The bylaw was from, I think, 1921. So it's 100 and, 102 years old. And I said, I don't know, but I'll find out. So that's, um, that's the spirit with which I bring this um, to, the, to the committee. I'm not necessarily um, this res. She she couldn't be here tonight. She hoped to attend. She couldn't be here. Um, I'm not necessarily advocating on her behalf. She can do that herself. I happen to think it's a really good idea, and I agree with it. But um, purely as a process issue, I wanted to flag it for discussion. Are you asking the question what the process is to change a bylaw, or are you? No, we know, we know that. I think it's in the it's in the book there. Um, I, I think it's a good idea, and I, I think you still have to have um, uh, people, uh, hard copies available to those people who do, that don't use their computer or don't have access to it. So as long as we offered both, I think that would be fine. Gail, go ahead and then maybe ask Kari for her thoughts also. Oh, and I'll, I'm probably stealing Kari's thunder. I'm doing that a lot tonight. <laughs> um, and Kari, definitely jump in. One item that I did speak to her about, which we do for other items, is we have at least one copy available at the library, we would have copies mm -hmm. here that folks could come in and look at. And then there's always, if you know, one or two people come in, we could print out a copy for them. 
it wouldn't be bound and pretty, but we would at least have copies available at the library. It, and Kari can probably say it more eloquently. Oh no, you did a great job. I, I would just um, add that um, the warrant is mailed out to every household already. And within the warrant, it could be stated where finance committee report copies are available so that people know where to go online. And also they know that if they need one, they can get one from the townhouse. And this just gives the opportunity for people who need it to have access to it. And for those who don't want it to be able to access it online. I think it's a good idea. And so my opinion doesn't matter. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Kari. Don? Um, I wonder if we should uh, consider doing an executive summary that's in the warrant or uh, mailed with, you know, as an addendum to the warrant, and then have the full document available online. So are you suggesting the summary as part of the warrant or it's with, mailed with, with the it, warrant? In it, no. In it. No, the timing is different, completely different. Yeah. Timing is January versus April. Right. Well, it would definitely be a separate mailing. John. What, what's the cost? that we're debating here? Like, do we know the, the amount of dollars that we'd be potentially um, saving? So, so to print the document is upwards of about fifteen to $20,000, depending on the number of pages, the color, and then the cost to mail it. I don't have that. So I would say all in, you're probably looking at fifteen to $20,000 a year to real it's, yeah. it's real money. And it gets more expensive every year yeah. when we do it, this year particularly, because we've also <clears throat> historically, but we've also added pieces to it each year when we do the mailing. So it becomes, it's it's a sizable document mm -hmm. to, to mail. It would probably also help with the schedule too, because you don't have to have it backed up for printing, which is what we have to do now. So it could be useful. Peggy and then Don. Um, I, I, I think for sure we would we would need to print it for people that want it so that schedule thing isn't going to totally go away uh, another thought would be to just like our utility bills you could opt to up get it online otherwise it would get mailed because we don't have everyone's email address we need to we can send them one piece of paper identifying where it is online but we don't know everyone has online access <clears throat> and know some people that don't um you know, due to eyesight problems or other such things. So uh, I think it, I think it's a good idea. I don't think it's that much money. Um, probably appears to voters that it's more money than it is, uh, but it would have to be a, a process. Well, I'm thinking back before I was a member of this uh, committee, I always looked at the Think Down report, but if it had been a link, I wouldn't have clicked it. So um, my worry is we'll lose nine nine out of ten uh, uh, members of the audience, and so I, I guess I'll circle back to that notion of an executive summary of the report with the full detail, and and just simply you know reduce the cost by eliminating uh, most of the paper. Yeah, Amrath. Yeah, while we're talking about the finance committee report, um, I'll just point out other towns have gone to not even mailing the warrant out, so. If you are having this conversation, we could probably have a conversation about not mailing either the warrant or the finance committee report and having all of them available online or come to the library or the townhouse to pick up a copy, substantially reducing the cost. Yeah, right. he just said exactly what I was going to say. Should we kick this back to the select board and say, figure out what you want to do with the warrant and the finance and make it the same across the board? Yep. You know, because it's, you know, it's bylaws, right? It's not. It's not the FinCom's decision what to do, it's by it's by law stuff that we have to get around. Mary, thoughts on that? We need more work. <laughs> <laughs> we need more work. So that's a yes. <laughs> I take that as a yes. <laughs> next, next. <laughs> Lindsay, you were gonna say something? Or? Oh, sorry. Okay, you're you're gonna bring it back for those in the audience. Okay. So let's hear back at our next meeting what you guys think of that. I, I like the idea, but as I was sitting here thinking <clears throat> about our previous discussion and trying to educate folks, Don, your point, 
both optics wise as well if it's not handy or people <clears throat> don't know, I kind of wonder about that. So let's maybe see what the select board thinks about it and then we can ruminate a little bit more. It would be helpful actually, Eric, if you know the person to get their input around, hey, given what we just went through and we're trying to figure out ways to reach out to more folks and educate them, maybe one year we do both. I don't know. I'm open to something like that uh, where we proactively say go here, but also send it out. I, I don't know. But so I worry a, about this. And, and mention the total overall cost of 20000 I do have a question about this being a bylaw, that in the bylaw it says we have to send it out. Do we have to go and have the bylaw officially change? So yeah. that so yes. it's a two-year process to begin with, right? Because we would have to do it at whatever no. time meeting. Yeah. Uh, Kari, Kari, can we hear your opinion, please, if you're still online? Yeah. What else to happen um, if we want to do this? So it starts with a warrant article. If town meeting passes the warrant article to amend the bylaw, then it would have to go to the attorney general. And that can take up to 90 days for approval. Okay, so if for it has approval. to go. Okay. We're definitely printing this year. We're definitely That's printing right. this year. That's right. Right. So we can't, let me just finish up. Oh. Thanks, Henry. Um, so what we have to do is decide if we want to investigate this more. And yep. if we do, what are the ramifications? Yes. What's the timeline for yes. it? And the cost associated with it. Yep. And we could actually have a whole campaign if we wanted to up front. And I'm not talking about campaign one way or another. I'm just saying <laughs> this could be, somebody could take this on as a full-time job, right? Getting it organized. That'll there be 50. Go. Keep going. Kathy? Hello. I'm all for um, technology. And I do like reducing paper. Um, I... My fear is that people will not read any of it. Um, if it's if it comes in the mail and it's laying on the table, <clears throat> you'll probably open it at least once. So, uh, quasi, and then I think we've all huh? go ahead, quasi. Yeah, I think that was that was my question. Is even the hard copy? How many people are really reading it? Uh, because it is a pretty thick book that's coming, and and my neighbors they receive it. They're still, you know, asking me, hey, where's my money going? You know, what's what's the plan? What's the budget? They received the same book that I did, but I was interested because, you know, I'm interested in finance, but they haven't even opened the book. So I'm curious to know yeah. how many people are really reading this. What we could do, right, is we could do the same thing we're gonna we've always done, but then also have a link. And we could look how many what what are the clicks we're getting on the link? And we could sort of figure out, is there a lot of interest in seeing it online? We have the link. This yeah, year. maybe we can look to see. We could also take that. a survey. We could initiate a survey. <laughs> Not in the back, but we could initiate a survey if we wanted to. If we wanted to change the process, that's one thing. Yeah. But we could also take a survey to see who's interested in it and sure. who isn't. So let's let's do this. I want to, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's, okay, so let's get back on track. Okay. We've asked the select board to see what they what their thinking is on the Warren article. They'll come back to us and we could have another conversation next month. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. So now uh, we're going to talk a little bit about finance committee practices and objectives. I think you've seen some of these get implemented. Hopefully everybody got meeting invites in their calendar. I'm going to turn it over to Gail, who's going to walk through some ideas that Eric and I talked to her about you about a month ago or six weeks ago. So take it away. Yeah. And some of this um, might be repetitive for folks because we did touch on it briefly last month, but knowing we have a couple of new members in order to, and I, I have to thank Eric for helping sort of think through some of this. The, the goal would be a week before the meeting to have the meeting posted online. And before that, once we set the calendar, the goal would be that um, we would send out meeting invites for all of the meetings already in everybody's calendars, whichever version folks use, so that it's there. And then when we post the agenda, we would include a link within that invite so that everything is contained 
in one place. The same would be for the packet. The goal will be to get the packet out at least two days before the meeting. Um, ideally, we can look towards trying to get it out sooner than that once we come into a really good cadence about getting the material for it. The goal with that, again, would be to attach it to the same email invite that you have received. That way you're not searching through emails to say what's the latest version, when was it sent out. And also if we do need to make adjustments to the agenda or if the packet goes out and we have additional items, you can just continue to use the same link and it'll bring you to the most updated version that we thought would help resolve some of the email clutter in folks <laughs> not knowing which email to click on. Um, the other part that we had talked about is the correspondence. So there is a email address that folks can email into. The goal would be that anything that comes in before five o'clock on Monday, the week of the meeting would be included within the correspondence that is in the packet. If there is something critical, typically more so around the guidelines timeline and budget timeline, there might be emails that continue continue to come in, we would set up an addendum to make sure that the committee is getting those timely. Anything that comes in after that deadline would go in the packet for the next meeting. So we're looking to do that to help streamline and help folks out so that you're not getting 27 emails from me throughout the course of the month. I know you enjoy that, but this <laughs> might help folks with their emails. So again, it's to take advantage of the technology. What we're also looking to do is make sure any items that will be being discussed at the meeting are included in the packet. What I'm not able to do is after the fact, after the meeting, go in and up update the packet because it was not part of the packet before the meeting. What we could do is put a second link to say additional information, but we're trying not to clutter up the, the web page and link. So the goal will be get it to us ahead of time so it actually is part of the packet. We've done a lot of work around updating the Finance Committee webpage. So thank you, Lois. I owe you a debt of gratitude for all the help with the minutes. We are, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the way there. So we've done a lot of work to just reconcile, make sure all the packets are out there, make sure all the minutes are out there. One of the items that we've talked about as well as getting some of the policy documents, I have to give a shout out to Chris, who is the go-to person to help me locate some of these, is to also build out the page for any of these items that are solidified, either bylaws or other items that will build out the Finance Committee webpage as well. That way it's one place that folks can go to get it because Chris has been <laughs> extremely helpful but someday she's going to say okay I can't be the the library anymore so I'm also working to build out some of those documents so as we're getting them I want to be able to keep them out there so that if folks have a question what is the timeline what is this we, we have the sources there um, so those are some of the items we're trying to do to help streamline the process but I'm definitely open to other thoughts or suggestions that folks have. Thank you, Gail. Um, a couple other things I'll note um, we're trying to do. So one is you'll notice public comment right at the beginning of the meeting to just give people an opportunity to voice what they'd like. But as you'll see, as we go through the course of the year and we take votes, what I'd like to do is have our discussion and then hear from the public before we vote. Because a few of the committees I've observed and what we've typically done here is we discuss, we vote, and then we open it up for public comment, which kind of seems a little mm -hmm. strange. So I'd like to hear from the public before we actually vote. We could have questions back and forth. Maybe we change our minds, et cetera. So hopefully everybody's okay with that. I'd like to try that and see what happens. I am mindful, however, that you know sometimes we may have to limit the time that people actually comment. And so I'll be careful as a chair to make sure you know, we're not giving somebody 20 minutes to talk if, they, if they're repeating stuff. And I would also ask you guys as members to literally kick me under the table or raise your hand and suggest that we move on. Not only, frankly, for the public comment part, but as we talk, sometimes we sort of talk too much. So just raise your hand and say, hey, let's move on, right? So if we do that, hopefully we can trim down the time 
that we all spend. I know we all like each other, but uh, there's a game out at 830. So I'll try to get us out of here before that. <laughs> so, but we'll try to hopefully streamline our meetings. Okay. That, that was uh, one thing. And then um, the second piece related to what we talked about earlier uh, around the education. One of the things I'd like to try out, and I'd love everybody's input on this, whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, is when we take consequential votes, whether, or we hear consequential information. So as you'll see in a few minutes, just like we've done over the last couple of years, when we get the first set of five-year revenue and cost projections, I'm proposing that basically we do a page, page and a half, very high level statement or summary of what transpired, right? It doesn't serve as the minutes, those will come in due time. But we do that literally the day, day after, within a day, 24 hours, 48 hours. And we both put it on the finance committee website, but we also send it to the local paper of record. And hopefully they'll take that information and just put it out there. It's a factual statement, doesn't have to, have any opinions, but for example, if we decide that we decided these are the guideline criteria A and B and the percentage is this, we just put it out there and hopefully that will foster a dialogue and get information out there sooner. And, and I thought of this because one of the things as I sat back and observed and thought about what happened last year is, you know, we set preliminary guidelines and then we heard from both the town and the schools they came in and we raised our guidelines for them, for both entities. And while we didn't ultimately, the schools, we didn't ultimately agree on what the final number should be. I think most folks forgot that we actually heard and took some of that input into account. And so I'd like to be able to, again, remind folks that this is two-way communications. We're listening, observing, putting that information out there so that they're constantly updated if they want to be, right? No, it's not going to assure that everybody's going to go read it, but at least we've done our part to communicate more consistently and through the course of the year, rather than just at the end through a thick report that shows up at their doorstep. So Here's having right. said that, let me just open it yeah, up yeah. now for comments and questions and input. Where are you proposing to put this information? So one, it would go somewhere on the finance committee website, we can okay. put it, right? That, that's where it would go. All right. And by the same token, I, I think we should send it to the bridge and hopefully they can have a running finance committee quarter or something like that, where again, not every week, certainly this week, I don't think there's anything consequential, right? But when there's consequential votes and we can decide meeting by meeting, hey, these are the three bullet items or four bullet items from this meeting that we can put up there. Have you mentioned this to the bridge yet? I have not mentioned it to the bridge yet. Okay. It, it, this... I did mention it to Kari, and she thought that was doable and fine. Okay. I mean, I think that this is a great idea. Yep. Um, and and maybe they should be approached to see can we have a column? You know, it, can there be a, oh. you know a space yep. in their weekly publication? It might not be every week that we have input, but um, it it seems like a great way of communicating to um, the masses, to everybody in Concord. Great. Yeah, good. Thank you. Other comments, thoughts? Suresh, did you just volunteer, by the way, to write a couple of columns? <laughs> well, well, with the same token, in the Concord Bridge, if you have a QR code for the uh, the for our report, that would be helpful too. And the warrant, a QR code for the warrant because everybody gets oh, the you know, conquered idea. brace. So, you know, I think that'll be a more interactive, at least. A QR code in the, in the um, bridge, in the Concord Bridge. Yeah. In the Concord Bridge. This is something we should, yeah, we should be looking at this to see how do we convey information effectively. Yeah, go ahead, right here. Um, I think it's a great idea. It's going to be the implementation that's yeah. going to be the question. And I, myself, if I were writing it, I would want it to. I would want to run it by the committee before it hit the paper. And if I wasn't writing it, I'd like to see it before it hit the paper. So, 
that's going to drag out the timeline. You know, it might be something that you have to going to be have to be very structured in terms of what the content content can be and all because otherwise it will have a lag time of two weeks at least. Right. Um, we'll but talk. anyway, it's yep. something to talk about. Like, how often do you have to do it? I mean, I think the less is better. So it wouldn't be. Yeah, no, it would not be once a month. Time. No, 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 no. It could be three or four times a year. Yeah, exactly. Oh, all right. So okay. when we talk about future meetings, and I'm, we'll talk about future meeting dates, there's probably four or five meetings where we might take consequential votes. And again, structured is correct. I mean, I'm just making it up. Tonight, the Concord Finance Committee voted the following guidelines. Boom, 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 and that's it, right? And that way it's out there. I don't think we have to add color in because the minutes will reflect that. This is not a way to tell everybody exactly what happened, but let's be real. How many people end up reading minutes, right? But at least this gets it out there and at least it's published somewhere as a table. The, Sorry? Decision, the decision points that we came across. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and what the right? vote was, right? It was, a, it, was, a, right? it was unanimous. It was, you know, just so people right. say, okay. That was my thinking. So I can definitely reach out to the bridge mm -hmm. and see what their thoughts are, but at a minimum, I think we should at least put it on our website. So if folks are like that idea, um, you know, we try it. Maybe even for the first one, we can even take 10 minutes and say, yeah, this is what might go up. And if folks are comfortable, we go along with that. And then maybe you're, Kathy, you've got furrowed eyebrows. You've got concerns? You say people can uh, go to the, web. the microphone. When you say people can go to the website, do people know? I mean, the, the town of Concord website is not easy to navigate. So uh, this is why this is why I'm proposing a two prong strategy. Yeah. Okay. But we could have a headline. You know, that we could have Gail give us a headline when we put something out, right? That that takes you over to it. Okay. Well, well, the other thing we can do, and I think the school committee does this. They have a mailing list. Right. And they, well, uh, they yeah, do. no. And I don't know that we do. Well, they have they all the address. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking emails. I'm talking emails. Not That's into us having a mail list or anything. No, no, but, no, no, what I'm suggesting. No, no, what, no, 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 no. Hold on. Let's oh, let me finish. What I'm simply suggesting is if we post something, we can just put the notice of where to find it and ask the school committee and other committees well, send out the list. So again, there are different ways to do this. I, I don't think we've got to decide now, but the point is at a minimum, we do something. And then if we've got other ideas to expand it, we can do that. But let's not <clears throat> let the, be the enemy of the good and at least try something is my thinking. Rasha, we do have a mailing list. I get email every time there's something related to the finance committee. It's the finance committee subscription on the Concord website. That is true. Well, well, there you go. So, you know, so sure. why don't you try to recruit a subcommittee to work on this to bring it back to the next meeting? Who would like to volunteer for a subcommittee? I will. Okay, you and I can take this offline. And we can do this. Okay. Lois Sorry, Lois. Lois. Nope, she's muted. Nope. Okay. I have some constraints over the next couple of weeks, but I'm happy to participate to the extent I can. Okay. Um, I it, I think this is a great idea, Parashar, and I think we can make it. Uh, we I have some ideas about how to make it work that I don't want to take up everyone's time with. So, okay, yes, let's I'm do that. Then. Let's move on. on. Thank you, Parashar. As Emma said, there is a you know you can subscribe yourself on Concord's websites to receive alerts for anything, right, Gail? For yeah. like road closures, like for agendas, and yeah, stuff. for agendas, any, any of that stuff. So you can okay. go that route, which is there you go, which is is something us not maintaining a mailing list. And I, I did. That's what I meant. I didn't mean us doing the main mailing list, right? Because we don't want to do that. But if there's a list served like that, we put it on there. Carlin, yeah. and then we're going to move on. If you form a subcommittee, don't you have to comply with open meeting law? You do. That subcommittee? Uh, yes. So call it a subcommittee. You're, you're in that. Subcommittee. Oh, so, Enough, so, don't call it a subcommittee. Another, assign one person, and perhaps that one person may ask for help. That's right. So we have a little working group here. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's go to the next topic. Uh, potential topics and objectives for fiscal year 24. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time on this, but I don't want to necessarily want to spend an hour because we've got a 
we've got a few other topics ahead of that. <coughs> I asked for input from folks. I got some in good. Is she on? Oh, I don't know. She's on. I've been checking. She hasn't been on yet. Been on? Okay. Yeah, she's, she's not on. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Um, let's talk about topics and object and uh, objectives that we want to focus on. And this is an open um, open conversation, I think, right? And so based on both my thoughts, input that I've gotten from various folks, I'm going to, uh, what's the best way to do this, I guess, is I've got a list here. Um, I could put it up or maybe I, why don't I go around the room and just get two or three from folks. Um, I'll keep a running list and then maybe I can populate it and align it with what we have. And then we can, um, we can put it up on the screen. Does that make sense? And if you don't have thoughts or you want to pass, that's perfectly okay. So, um, two or three. Peggy, I'm looking at you. If you had your druthers, what would two or three top issues that we ought to be focusing on? Now, let me preface this. We've got our list. As you'll see in a few minutes, we're going to invite the schools and the town and the select board to come in in June with their ideas of, from their perspective, what are the things we should be keeping our eyes on? We'll consolidate the, everything. And then in July, at the July meeting, we can vote on a plan. One of the things I'd like to do for this year is actually have a formal written plan that says, hey, here are the five or seven issues. Here's kind of what we're seeking to get out of it by the end of the year, or by the end of 2023 or whatever that might be. So we can look back this time next year and kind of figure out whether we set out to do what we accomplished. I think these are the kinds of questions that we're constantly asking the schools, asking the town. And from my perspective, we ought to basically establish the same practice. I'd like to do that this year if, if possible. So that's the fuller context of this. Peggy, two or three ideas that you think we ought to be focusing on this year? One thing that I, I thought didn't work last year was the adopt adoption of a guideline. Um, I, I think it's, I think we, and I think this is what you're talking about, you know, meeting with the school committee, meeting with, you know, others earlier and more continuously um, so that our guideline is cognizant of their budget at the same time you know we are tasked to keep a you know tighter rein on the budget very honestly so we don't want to become so enmeshed in their budgets and our guidelines so it's just a, a joint process so i don't know how that turns into an objective i think understanding where they're coming from sooner and they are understand where we're coming from sooner before the guideline, I guess, I guess I'm saying before the guideline or their budget is actually issued. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, we're necessarily going to agree. We're just going to have more of a discussion sooner. And I think you are already outlining that. And that's all I can think of right now, Pair okay. Shar. Yep. Well, the big topics in town that you have focused on? No, I'll take a pass. Yeah. Okay. Kathy? The, um, the process of setting the guidelines and looking at the projected uh, tax receipts um I, I i'm not sure that that's always been part of the discussion with the various whether it's the school or the town in terms of why the guidelines are set the way they are so perhaps these meetings that you're suggesting which should should open up the door of discussion um my, my concern is that people understand 
where the guideline comes from uh, as far as balancing a budget. Thank you. Okay. I'm all about communication. And I think that um, when do we hear from town departments? It's at the hearing at the end of the year when they, when we're coming along and, and um, getting to town meeting. And I would encourage us to, to uh, invite different departments along with the town manager, of course, at, at any of these, um, but to, to get a better understanding. We already know that, you know, public works needs $10 million a year for the next five years. Um, and I was reviewing in the minutes that we had for today, I was reviewing the percentages and I came across one that was um, recreation deferred maintenance. They had a loss of 300,000. Well, is that going to continue? Or um, the water increase for people who get public water is going to be 12 and a half percent this year. And the sewer rate increase is going to be 5%. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is if we had more communication and a better understanding of what the what the town is actually doing and what the needs are, as well as with the schools, I think it would be really helpful. Maybe not in, you know, when our guideline comes out, but at the same time, it would be helpful so that townspeople also have this information yep. if they want to watch it on TV or Zoom. Okay, good. Thank you. Carla. Proposition two and a half. Anything over $300,000, take a close look at. Don't just sweep it under the rug. That's it. John. Uh, I have several here. First is a, a succinct and very clear definition of the sustainable growth rate from the per taxpayer's perspective. It doesn't involve methodology. It's two sentences that tells them what it is and why it's important. I think we need to craft that. And then I think we need to, uh, to, to present at town meeting, present that, and then say the impact, if all of the budgets that are presented tonight is on warrant are passed, the impact of how high above the sustainable growth rate are we and what the, uh, because I think voters don't know the, the total uh, impact. Second is to that a potential goal for this year would be to, to understand, to reach out to other towns to see how their finance committees are communicating and are, are dealing with the same issue we are. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll leave it at that. The rest, I think, are repetitions. Yep. Greg? Ah, so one thing we need, I don't know if it's the finance committees or what, but to focus on revenue growth in, in, in Concord, yep. right? What? Revenue growth, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't know if it's our duty to sort of produce that and do that, but one huge objective of this town needs to be revenue growth because right. obviously coming from the taxpayers, yep. it's not, not, not going to suffice the whole way. Um, and then the guidelines process, I would, I would like to see a little bit better. I feel like sort of we set in stone and then at the end, it was like, ah, too late to kind of make adjustments, you know, um, some way to work with all the town entities. If something like what just happened does happen again, like, can we not have the curbs on some street or for, for example, you know, I don't know <laughs> if that saves, you know, if that saves money and stuff like that, but just a little more conversation around that. I felt like we got locked in sort of late at the, 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 the game there. Um, and Don, your, your last point gave me a, a good thing. I think a lot of people at town meeting do vote article by article, mm -hmm. right? One article, maybe $7 for you know the taxes, one article, maybe 40, one article, maybe 70, one article, maybe 700. And at the end of the day, they're like, I don't actually know how much I just added to the, to the bill. And, and uh, th that would be something good to show is like, if you did all these articles, this is what's good. This is what's going to happen. I don't know if we show like the full, like if we approve everything that's going to happen tonight, or I, I shouldn't say everything that's going to happen tonight. Yeah. If all of the articles get approved, that's going to be X number on your, your tax bill. 
should be a tote board on the screen, right? What's that? So boom, boom, boom. You, you, you say that. I did suggest to somebody, I won't say who, but like a thermometer that's exactly. up in the room. Yeah, exactly. $7, $40, <laughs> $270, you know what I mean? Like, and we're getting this much closer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call it yeah. Point, two and a half yeah. is coming down. But yes, that would be a... We can make that happen in modern Absolutely. day. I, I know some electronics. I can get some. <laughs> Be in the old fashioned and just have somebody keep just raising. Harris, old game shows, right? Harris, fundraiser. Harris Shaw, I'd like oh, to see. Well, hold on. Let me just. Know. Okay, and I'll come back. Okay, John. Uh, I would dovetail on the revenue. Is is do we have any ability to politely cudgel the town? and the planning board and the select board to seriously consider how they stifle the business commercial <laughs> revenue growth. Um, it's a real serious problem that just hiring an economic vitality manager won't solve, but is a step in the right direction. And then one objective uh, for the committee might be with so many members is how can we be very concise and be very productive uh, in a streamlined way. Last year, I felt like there were times when we went way off the beaten path for a long time and just want to be mindful of everyone in the room yeah. heard properly. Yep. Lindsay. Yeah, I have um, just piggybacking off of the comments we've heard. My number one is is the exact same thing that Greg and John just said is re what are the ways that our finance committee can influence the town to think <laughs> more seriously about revenue growth it's much easier to come to you know to come to town meeting if we're if we've got uh and and approve the budgets of all the different committees which have worthy causes if we're generating revenue right to support it so i think yeah and I'm, I'm i'd like to explore ways that we can have influence there because i'm i'm actually not sure um beyond you know observing uh the 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 planning board and others um the second was exactly the way you open the meeting Parashar with with um, Parashar with um, more education of, to the public of what finance committee does. I, it's just shocking how many people think that we actually tell people tell the school committee what they, what they can and can't do. Um, and um, so I think we need to educate. It's like on us to educate the public about what we're doing. So I love this theme of this meeting so far. So those are my two main things. Um, but when in this meeting in July, I'm glad the school committee is doing a joint meeting with us because another thing I would love to understand better, which to be very clear, we talked about it. Oh, I'm maybe not. Maybe not I'm proposing July. Right. But right. We still have to decide. Right. Okay. So that they can better understand our guidelines process. But I'd love to better understand the there's still uh, it's still a disconnect between what is where's the variability in the budget increase coming from? I think I understand special education, but what's that range that we should expect? Um, you know, is it, what's the range of variability around that, that we should just expect every year so that we dot surprised when they say, oh, special education budget's up 20% or whatever it is. Um, just having that, having a little bit more of an understanding of what to expect, um, I think would make the conversations a lot easier, so. Yeah. Eric. Um, lots of, lots of good ideas already. I would just add, uh, Don's comment about best practices in other towns. I agree. There are also organizations we can look to like the mass municipal association. They have a nice collection of best practices for, um, finance committees. We could take a look at, and I'd be happy to, to lead that, um, really sending a message. And I, I think we're already taking steps along these lines, sending a message that we value public input really making it clear that we the public is welcome to to attend our meetings and actively participate. And then lastly, um, the bond rating. It came up a few times um, in the context of the uh, the school budget. But just as a committee understanding what it's all about, what goes into it, I think there's sometimes a perception that it's, um, you know, we, we sit around fingers crossed waiting for our bond rating, but it's, it's actually quite predictable based on um, the signals we're sending as a town. Good, Chris. Yep, so um, I agree on the revenue side. So I think setting a target, you know, working with the, um, whatever group in town we wanna to talk to, whether it's economic vitality director or the select board to talk about a number. So I think, you know, we 
somewhere between two and three million is what we're talking about. It's not it's not the end of the world, right? But it's it seems to me it's achievable. But if we could do that, that I think that would help. So trying to work on revenue is important. And the other one I think is cap spending. So I think we made some good progress with the capital planning um, uh, group that, and the process that the town started, but it doesn't include tier two, right? So I think we've got to focus on tier two. I think sustainability, we have to have a point of view about sustainability. There can be huge spending associated with sustainability. And we see this with the, uh, the school, the, the, the item that we had the, uh, the discussion on um, for uh, where the, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the where, what's the name of the, uh, yeah, we, the, the uh, heat pumps, heat pumps, right in that building, right? So it, it, it's, it's a frustration for the schools. I think it's a frustration for us because it comes through as big capital spending. And we have the question about the school buses. So I think having a point of view for us around what should be the financial metrics for sustainability, right? So what do we want for an ROI? What's the timeline? What's I'd like to hear from the facilities manager. What are we talking about? I think Carrie consolidated all the facility management under a single player and her team be good for us to maybe meet with that guy and our woman whoever and find out what's your plan here right so how do the facilities in the town look what's your thinking on on green cpc gets involved in that it seeps into everything right so it's we see it a lot the rec budget another part of cap spending right so the rec department is going to do a strategy review and I know what comes after we do the strategy review, right? It's the ask, right? I need whatever. I need a track. I need basketball courts. Whatever it is I'm going to need, it's going to it's going to come forward. So I think you also have 2229 Main Street. Question as to whether the town's going to buy it or not buy it. I don't know timing on that, Mary, but it seems like it's coming up. Yeah. So cap spending, I think, is sort of of interest to me and in the revenue. Okay, good. Thank you. Anruth and then Lois, and then I'll list some items that I had, many of which I think you guys talked about also. Anruth. I'm just I'm just going to pass because most of the things which I wanted to add are already been said. So let's move on in the interest of time. Lois? You're muted if you're yeah, speaking. I'll be short because I'll be short because um, it, it's the advantage of being last. <laughs> most of you guys have said what I was thinking. I just want to uh, reinforce what Chris said. The, um, the thing that I wanted to raise had to do with capital spending um, and managing that process. Um, I think there's um, there's pent up demand in a lot of the areas of the town's operations, and um, we need a system to make sure that that happens in an efficient way and that we're not duplicating effort and duplicating expenditures. Um, we've got a kind of a start on that. I, there have been a lot of good ideas. I th I agree with the emphasis on revenue and some of the other things people have said, but cap spending came up later when Chris raised it, and that was the thing that I was waiting to raise. So I really want to reinforce that. Okay, good. Thank you. So I had a list also. Uh, one, the finance, finance committee plan we talked about. We ought to develop a plan, put some of these topics up there, and try to make progress on those. The town strategic plan, the town does not have a strike plan. So, you know, the school's got one. That's good for them. They're revising theirs. The town should have one too, frankly. I've talked to, I've talked to uh, uh, Carrie and she agrees she would like to do that. So I would encourage her, put that on her list, just encourage her to do that. Uh, CPS strategic plan, monitor and provide input is appropriate because they've got a new one. We ought to Again, just hand in hand, monitor and provide input. Revenue sources, I've got a list, so I agree on the revenue. I won't go through the list, but there's a number of places, uh, pilots, the 229 site, for example, rental property that the town rents out. There's a number of places. If you add up all the pennies and nickels and dimes, it could amount to something, right? The target should be, I think, two to $3 million. I mean, that's what Gail and Bob projected last year is a forecast that we need to avoid a, an override. So why not make that an actual target and see what we come up with? I'm looking at Mary, because it's not just us, but it's the select board, the planning board, right? We need to figure this out somehow. Um, and then just a couple other, the school union contracts are up for negotiation. Now we have no formal role in it, but I think it's important for us to get regular updates so that we can assess what the impact is gonna be when we do up our 
uh, Finance Committee report, and we're not surprised at the end of the day. Um, on benefits, the, uh, the Gail can, uh, Gail, I think you guys are going to go and try to separate how we account the accounting for town employees versus school employees, because right now it's a big bucket and it takes a lot of work to try to separate the two. And I think you guys are going to try to streamline it, make sure we're accounting for it separately, which again is important to get transparency on where money gets spent, right? Um, capital plan review was another one that was on my list. Um, and then the 250th anniversary committee. Get updates from them because they're probably going to be asking for a chunk of change. And again, we ought to not be surprised in October, or November when they come in and say, hey, we need $2 million or whatever they might need. But also on the flip side, somehow encourage them to go private fundraising as much as possible. I think we already gave that message last year, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. But we probably, we understand, but we probably need to reinforce that, right? Um, so those are the things that I had in my list. What also goes along with that is they can reevaluate what their plan is yeah. and their budget. You yeah. Know? So that's the list. Uh, in the interest of time and efficiency, I'm going to propose a process and see if folks agree or disagree. I'll Put together, I'll combine all of these. I took notes. I'll put them in a PowerPoint with the topic and draft objectives, and then circulate it for input one on one, one way communication. I'll integrate that input, and then we can discuss it at next month's meeting. We'll also hear at that point from the select board and the town and the schools, I'll invite them to next month's meeting, get their perspective, and we can then modify our gen our uh, topics as, as necessary. Does that make sense? And then adopt it in July so that we've got a little bit of time to ruminate on it and discuss further. I don't mean to cut off discussion, but I'm also mindful that we wanna keep things moving. So that makes sense as a process? Sure. Yeah. D, you were gonna say something? I, I'm just thinking about the whole laundry list that we have yeah. and part of the process should be, how do we prioritize? I'm that? gonna ask you for votes on that. I'm gonna give you 10 bucks and people put their $10 on the different items, yeah. maybe $20, but we're the finance committee, so maybe it's 10. <laughs> if I might, um, I'd like us to look into the trade-offs. I mean, we came, yeah. we, we came to the, we came to the end of the process and we had the schools, everything else had come in within guidelines and the trade-offs that the schools proposed to meet the budget were, you know, music and, you know, we, none of the things that anybody wants to have happen, but there's a whole lot of other budgets within the town. And if schools are number one for folks, I mean, we should have some prioritization. Um, we spend a lot of money. I mean, the school budget is 45 million. Um, so I, I agree. And so, hold, so, hold that thought. So I've got if some other way we could- well, there, there may be, and I'm gonna- well, We won't dump out the trash. There way. Hold that thought, because we're gonna get to future meeting next, okay. right now. Thank you. And I've got an idea similar to what Greg was talking about. I've touch base with Gail about it. I want to put a seed in your mind so we can ruminate on it. And if there are other ideas or ways to go about doing this, open to it totally, right? Um, so hold that thought. Let me just save this document before I lose it here. Um, but we are going to do that. Um, all right. Thank you for the topics. Good news is revenue came up. Capital plan came up. A very consistent communication to the town residents came up. Again, we'll consolidate it, circulate it around, get input, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, next topic is um, well, administrative processes, but we've already covered that. So future meeting dates. Let me, Gail, do you have that up or should I throw this up here? Uh, you can. I can throw are, it up. Are you using your the one you just sent? Yeah, from yesterday or whatever. Right. Yeah, a really crazy idea. Yeah. What if we just have one guideline and make the three entities negotiate to one guideline rather than pitting everyone against each other? Because I think Kathy, I think this is what you're saying. 
I felt that there was extra money or the high school hadn't been pushed hard enough and probably could have squeezed some money out of their budget, have them come in under guideline. Uh, the town was, you know, went to guideline pretty quickly and maybe there was some more room there, you know, cutting back on OPEB contributions for a while or some such thing. And we got in a big argument just with one of the entities without going back to the others just because they had met their guidelines. So it's crazy, but I'm throwing it out. Yeah, no, that's fair. And I think that's probably a conversation to have with the guideline chairs and you guys can provide one way input to them. And as they think about the guidelines for this year, I'm happy to entertain it. I was actually thinking, and I thought this is where Kathy was going and I know Greg was going, but not just the guideline spending. We're talking about other spending that affects our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. And how do we try to bring the whole together, yeah. right? Not in a guideline way, but at least for informational purposes. Um, Maybe, but all maybe have the town rank their priorities. Oh well, well again, let's not get sidetracked. To uh, otherwise, somebody's going to kick me under the table in a good way. <laughs> all right, so let me throw up the meetings here. Um, can you guys? Yeah, that's up there. So one thing to note again to try to streamline stuff. After today's meeting, Gail is going to send out meeting requests on our calendars for all of these dates. Okay, to the extent that they get changed or we tweak them, she will be the person changing those meetings. Please accept them. And if you're not going to attend future meetings or can't, just decline. So she's got a sense of who's coming and who's not coming. But we're going to do it this way versus all of us getting on our calendars and putting them up there. It's, it just makes a lot more sense for one person to do that. So let me walk you through very quickly the schedule, it's based on what we did last year with some tweaks. Some of these are, well, I'll say many of them are holders because some of them tie into the date of annual town meeting. And as you'll see right now, it's tentatively April 28th, I want to say, um, but that may be subject to change, right? So we're today. So next month, as, as I said earlier, We'll invite the town, the select board, and the schools to hear what they think their key issues are. And also, I'm proposing that we have a capital plan primer, right? I think many of us are kind of new to the process. It wouldn't hurt to hear from Gail and the schools about, hey, how do you guys plan not just tier three, the big ones, but tier one and two? And kind of how does that process work so that we all have a better understanding? Those are the two major agenda items that I'm thinking about. In July, now whether we can do one meeting or two is a little bit open. Um, July, middle of July, finalize the our annual plan, what I was talking about earlier. We'll consolidate, get input, and this is what we're headed toward. The reason we've got a July 13th meeting is for the second item. Um, the town has to do any transfers that they're doing by July 15th, and they need finance committee to vote on it. So it's a placeholder meeting. If they've got transfers, we'll do a quick, short meeting. We'll vote on the plan and then we're out of there. Okay, that's what I'm proposing. Uh, if they don't do that, then we can do one of either two things. We'll do a straw poll. If folks are willing to get together for an hour to finalize the plan, we can do that, right? Or we can try to jam it into the end of July meeting. And this is the one where I'm suggesting the schools come in, we hear from them, educate them, us about how their budget process works, what the laws allow in terms of moving money from one fund to the next, carrying money forward from one year to the next, all those sorts of things. Uh, and at the same time, we provide an overview of the guideline process. And what do we have, you know, what do we, how do we develop the guidelines? What are the metrics we're using? And Lindsay and Lois, you guys can kind of lead that as you kind of think a little bit about next year's guidelines and what you want to do with them. Um, and then at, also at that meeting, we would discuss what type of information we want from the entities as they as we start thinking about next year's budget. Right. By the way, feel free to interrupt or entities. Entities. Yeah. Um, by the way, feel free to interrupt or ask questions. Right. Um, August 11th is just informational. We usually send out the informational letters there. Everything in blue, by the way, are the meetings. 
So we roll into August, and this is one where I would like input from the committee of whether we try to do something in the middle of August or the end of August. The thought is we usually do finance committee training in August, right? And Gail can conduct that training. If we decide to have training, we could also ask Hilltop Securities, our financial advisors, to come in and just share their perspective on the past last bond offering, kind of their general sense of our health and what they heard and, you know, what might put us over the edge in terms of downward rating or, or not. Um, and then at that meeting, I'm looking at Lindsay and Lois, you guys would hopefully just give us your draft metrics of what do you think the guideline, not the guidelines, but what are we using, right? Last year, we had a couple of metrics. To use. What are you guys thinking of using this year? Um, let me pause here. People prefer the 17th or the 24th? 24th? Is it better? I'm seeing nods for the 24th. Seeing agnostic people. Shaking of heads, either is fine. If not, the 24th will carry the day because Gail needs to take a vacation. It can either be in the middle of August or the end of August. What would you prefer? I'm just gonna take it. I during. think Gail should pick. She'll mail it in. Uh, Lois, you can't says, pick neither, Gail. You have to pick <laughs> one. You can't pick neither. So will you let us you don't have to tell us now. The, Maybe the, sorry. The 24th is fine. 24th. Okay. So we'll make it the 24th. Okay. So are you including the items that you have under the 17th in the 24th? Yes. Okay. That's either right. or. Right? Parsha, I do like the idea. Um, we, we've we skipped finance committee training for a couple of years, so I think that's a very good idea. I do like the idea. I don't want to overload that one um, uh, date, but I also like the idea of getting a, a little bit of an update from our outside advisors, which is something we haven't done in a couple of in the last three years. Um, and I think that would be useful. Yeah, good. Um, so this is where we get into a couple of meetings. I tried not to do this through the course of the year, but I'm also mindful that we should probably try not to have three or four hour meetings, right? And so if we do the 24th, I'm proposing we come back two weeks later, we will have had two weeks and Labor Day and maybe some burgers and beer to think about what Lois and Lindsay are proposing as a metrics and approve that a little bit earlier. And again, this is to facilitate the conversations. So we have more time to educate the schools in particular in the town, but definitely the schools around why we're picking what we're doing, right? Um, that we have a meeting on the 7th to talk about that. And if Hilltop couldn't make it, we would have them come in. That would be the alternative, okay? Russia, I have one question for you. Yeah. So one thing which we do is the hearing process before town meeting. The other major milestone for us is the guideline setting. Does it make sense for us to have a hearing on the guideline setting? Oh, the, the final meeting on guideline setting, could it be a public hearing? Uh, all our meetings are public. I, I so, understand. Um, I don't know. I don't think we need to do this as a a public, uh, it's a formal hearing. Um, All of our meetings are I, public meetings, but we don't advertise them as much as we do the public hearings. If we can get the word out that this is your opportunity to come and talk about it, or this is where we're gonna decide it, there's a difference between the public hearings and the attendance there and the regular meetings. But with the public sure. hearings serve a specific role, um, they relate to the proposals that are going to go before the voting body. I'm yeah. reluctant to characterize it as a as a formal hearing. I'd want to get some input from Carmen or town council on whether or not that makes sense. We're not I certainly think we should agree that um, we should take steps to encourage public participation in in these particular meetings. But I think that's a an overall goal we've set for ourselves this year anyway is to try and get the public a little more involved and a little more educated. I, mean, I, I agree with you, part, definitely, Amrit, that this is, um, it, these are places where we would really like to hear what people think. And we really like the public 
to come because we want them to understand what we're doing and we want to understand their priorities. But I, I'm shying away from the idea of characterizing these as public hearings. Yeah, and the other thing I forgot to add, and I'll go to D is I'm going to highlight the areas. Remember, we talked about putting a statement on the website. So, for yeah. example, August 24th, if when you guys come in with your draft, hey, these are the indices or me- metrics, or we're going to go look at that measure. I would suggest like that one we post there and encourage people to go and let them know that, oh, by the way, on September 7th meeting, we're going to have further conversation about this and we're going to vote on it, right? And then when we yeah. take a vote on September 7th, we put that out there and again, send it to the bridge or whatever other methods we have. So, you know, along the lines of the bridge, what I was going to say is we can in there, um, I don't know, they have a table and they say what's happening during yes, the day. Yes, We can idea. announce our meetings. Yep. Um, so Good that idea. anybody who's reading the bridge yep. could say, gee, I'm going to go to that meeting. Yeah, no, exactly. That's a very good idea. Write that down for our little subgroup or whatever. Okay. The public might be a little, public might be a little more tuned in and interested in the word guidelines after this past town meeting. True. Um, so, Amra, Amra, on your concept, I personally would rather not have public hearings on some of these topics, but you and I could talk offline and be interested to, and we you know, go uh, talk to Carmen and Kari, but I'd rather not. Sure. But I just, I just I just want to say one thing, Prussia. Our public hearings are not posted as public hearings, which are advertised or statutorily required. They're just a public meeting. We call them a public hearing. That's about it. That's all I'm asking for. Well, that's not true. I don't. Uh, only public. Only. I, Suresh, I think the only public hearings that we hold are for the town meeting, and they're advertised on the front of the warrant. Kari, Car- you're still on them. You're still in the meeting, and yeah. maybe just can you clarify what the I mean, what are the requirements for a public hearing versus a public a regular meeting? A public hearing means that you're you are hearing from the public, so it is the public's opportunity to speak, and you're not necessarily uh, commenting or discussing what the public is commenting on, but you're hearing them. So that that is where, for instance, for town meeting, you're having a public hearing to hear what the public input is on the articles that you will then, after the public hearing, you will discuss. So if you you could call it a public forum, you could call it, you know, something else with the word public in it to invite them. Um, but the generally the intent of the public hearing is that uh, rather than discussing you are simply taking in comments so it sounds like from a practical purpose other than well from a practical purpose as long as we hear from them and as long as we try to get people in the room it doesn't really matter so why don't we rename our um fincom meetings as well let's not okay so okay so let's this is where i'm going to stop the conversation and we're going to keep moving Okay. okay so thank you kari for that explanation appreciate it uh, yeah. September 21st would be the first opportunity for the schools and the towns to come in with their estimated 24 revenue. Gail is going to come in and projected 25 revenue. So now we'll have an opportunity to understand what, how are we doing for our revenue and what do we think it's going to look like for fiscal year 25, which is what we're planning for. And we will convey that information, of course, to the schools as well so that everybody understands what the revenue picture looks like. At that point, we'll also have from all three entities, their preliminary five-year projections, just like they did last time. Remember, they came in a couple of times and they tweaked a little bit and that's fine because that's what we're expecting. But we'll have a first good look at the end of September on both of those. And again, this is something where, you know, we would put this out there. It doesn't have to be complex. And it doesn't have to be lengthy, a little table. And this is kind of what's going on for the public to know and understand this is this is what the current thought process is. Um, capital planning forum will take place somewhere around September, presumably, but I'm holding October 19th if necessary, just again, depending on the guidelines and how much work there is or there isn't done. 
I remember last year we actually ended up meeting in the middle of October as well. Maybe we won't need it, but it's a placeholder. But then we go back to both a regular meeting and a guidelines meeting. Another month later, we'll hear back again, just like we did last year. Here are the updates. This is kind of now as close as possible to what we think our budgets will look like, but we're still tweaking the numbers. At that point, we then have the opportunity to actually set the preliminary guidelines, right? We, we know the metrics, we've heard what the needs are, and then we can kind of balance what the needs are with what we think the guidelines ought to be and actually have an estimated tax impact. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about either for September or October is again, this remember, total town spending and guideline spending are two different things. Yeah. And the guideline spending is a smaller number, a much smaller number than total spending. So Gail and I had a very brief conversation. I, I gave her a heart attack, but then we were able to revive her. And we're going to try to figure out a way to see if we can't have a very, very simple table that combines all of the spending that the town does. By town, I mean town, schools, a million dollars for this and a million dollars for that, affordable housing, whatever that is, into one table, and then try to figure out if we can show, well, this is the incremental increase in taxes for each of these, right? Something like that is kind of what I'm thinking. We're not gonna have recommendations on all of it, and we only set guidelines for a certain portion, but hopefully we can show people a total picture at a very high level. I don't know whether that will work. We'll try it out and see kind of if it makes sense. I that more about it. <laughs> Go ahead. I think as part of the microphone, yeah. it would be what other individuals are you in inviting? So is this Minuteman? Because obviously they have a budget as well. There are other pieces that are outside of here where we won't necessarily know what the ask is until we sometimes see the warrant. So I guess for this would be clarity of who you would want to reach out to to invite them. And obviously this would be a significant change to somewhat of the process if folks were being invited in earlier to say what their thoughts are. That was yeah. what thinking through if you look at what some of the other components are would be what would funds? no except the enterprise funds because they're not tax dollars right that's yeah. so, it's so revenue sources. oh yeah but let's <laughs> carlin and then d it was a d or um when you talk about the the impact you're talking about the impact to those people who who pay property taxes right yeah that won't affect a quarter of the population of Concord because they rent. Have you thought about that distinction and is that relevant to your analysis? I haven't thought about the distinction because property taxes are 84, 85% of our revenue. And so I'm not sure we have, so I'm open to it, but I, you know, I'm open to ideas on how to do that. I just don't know that we're sophisticated enough. For, I think either Dee or Kathy was gonna say something after call and then I'll if go If you that. rent in the town of Concord and taxes go up, your rent's gonna go up. Maybe. Okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not economists. We don't have the data to discuss to get into that, but keep going. No, that was my point yeah. too. The the, the, te the tenants pay rent pay taxes through their rent. All right. Yeah. So um so that's what I was kind of thinking, Kathy, to your earlier point of trying to show the big picture. I don't know whether it'll work, but I think it's something to try. And if folks have other ideas, I'm open to it. I just I just think that after the last two years, we should try to think of a way to not be stuck in the CPS. I mean, that's the last two years. And there's a big enough town budget that, you know, maybe maybe you said Peggy's just give the whole town a, a guideline. Carlos, which is a whole other place for so. Uh, we can't legally do that, though, because you have different boards, so you you can't do it. What, can't what, do, what do you mean you have different you boards? Have one guideline, it doesn't work. You well, have different, you have yeah. different governing bodies. So, and different well, well, so well, let, me, let me, let's just get back on track here, right? Because we're not discussing guidelines here. 
take your ideas to Lois and Lindsay. Whether we can do it or not, they can check into it and come back. I don't want to get into this conversation right now because it's not on the agenda. We yep, need to stick go. to what's on the agenda. Do you have direct comment on the agenda here or no? Yes. Okay. It is um, your revenue, what you've highlighted there. The highlight, by the way, is again, this is a point where we put something out. That's why I'm highlighting it. I'm suggesting that's I, all. I just want to speak yeah. to that. My, um, I'm wondering if we talk about the revenue estimations and, um, and projections for the next year, you know, are we going to have really, and maybe this is a question for Um, and we're having other people looking at this and we're going to be making decisions. Um, it's an estimate. It is an estimate, right? It, and it, and it, another, it, and the other part of it is a projection, right? What you think you're going to get. So it's the similar to expenses. I often equate this to your own personal budget. You're doing it 18 mm -hmm. to 24 months in advance. It's as good as the information you have on the day. Right. Mm -hmm you do it as well as, you know, knowledge of what you would expect, but it will never be, it, it's an estimate. Yep. I just wonder how that has a potential to impact the people that we're trying to communicate with. But uh, oh. just, I mean, historically, where we post the estimate to the uh, Yeah, I think, you know, part of it where we're looking at, obviously taxes, new growth is, is an estimate, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. We're also looking at any of the state items months before they're even talking about their budget. So we're estimating the chapter 70. So there's there's a lot of estimates based on historical knowledge, but a lot of it is, isn't known fact certain until further down the process. And we're you're, dealing you're estimating with interest income, what you're going to earn. <laughs> And we, we like do, we're, we're, we've got the latest in, information that we have, and we have to make decisions on those. And everything we do is public to you. I don't know that. And frankly, the people ought to see what we're making the decisions based on. Right. right? I mean, we're nothing to be scared about from my perspective. I'm not trying to be scared about it. I'm just trying to say we have to couch the information accordingly so that if there are changes, because I know one year there was a big change in the revenue um, in the January timeframe. And, you know, that has an impact on what we're going to do. Yeah. So I think we just have to couch it. You know, you have to um, be mindful of how you're communicating sure. the information. Yep. Um Middle of November sometime, Capital Planning Forum number two. This is actually where the town and the schools come to us and say this is their capital plan. And I think to the point several of us made, let's also include tier two. Figure out a way to maybe include tier one. And I'll talk to Gail a little bit about what correct. I mean, we don't need to hear about three thousand dollar copiers, of course, unless they're buying 20 of them or 30 of them, but figure out. Hmm you know, make sure that there's a filter for tier one, but tier two, see if we can get a look ahead, not only this year, but the next couple of years, similar to yeah. what Don did last year for the schools, right? And they sort of, they basically drop their budget and make it very clear even early in the process that rather than assume you've got $900,000, how are you going to spend it, which is the way it's always been done, make it clear in August and September that in November, what we'd like to see is a three-year sense of where do you think the needs are and what does it add yeah. up this year? What might it add up next year in the third year? And maybe some years it's a million, another year it's 700,000, right? I think do it that way. Parsha. Right. Parsha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't want mean to interrupt you, but it's frustrating to be remote. Um, I, I agree with you um, completely about all of this. I think one of the points, one of the things I learned last year and that, is something that I want to think about this year as we're looking at, at this is we borrow money a lot. Yep. And maybe we're borrowing money for things that that we shouldn't be borrowing money from. We're building yep. in long-term expenses and debt service. And I think that ties into the capital planning and what you were just saying about tier one, two, and three. I think, yeah, you're right. We don't need to look at the copiers, uh, at least not one of them or two of them, or 10 of them maybe, but 
we do need to think about the cumulative impact of that kind of spending and how it's allocated and how it's funded. When, when the schools came and said, we want our usual $900,000 um, for our um, capital budget this year, you, I think we all remember there were conversations saying, well, if they, they're, they're saying they need a little less, can that help out with the gap in the budget, um, the CPS budget? And the answer was no, because one is borrowing and one is not. Yeah. Um, we really need to think about capital planning in a much more holistic way and think about it in terms of how the town incurs and pays debt. And I so think, I that's think this, is, this is critical. Yeah. I, I agree. And I think we're going to hear more about it in June uh, with both the primer. And I, I know Bob and Gail are thinking through exactly that point around what do we borrow for versus saving money up for and, and spending it later on capital. Yeah. So Chris, mm -hmm. and yeah. we're going to, yeah, unless you've just, got anything else to add, we'll move on. Just one. So one of the other points that uh, Don had made is um, why don't we zero, uh, you know, zero uh, base the, uh, the cap budget. In the in in the schools, and I think they've just done it that way. But I think yep. it was a really good point. So it's another thing we can talk to them about. Yep. Uh, November twenty third is Thanksgiving, so you can kind of see that I've bracketed uh, potentially a meeting on the sixteenth, and then I've also got the or twenty seventh through 29th. And the reason I've got this is because. If you work backwards from April 30th for the town meeting day or the close of the warrant, which is January 3rd, we've got to set the final guidelines five weeks before closure. So that means technically November 29th, I think, or 28th, somewhere thereabouts. So that's like on a Tuesday or Wednesday um, after Thanksgiving. If the process is going smoothly, and we'll know that hopefully by October, we could potentially just have a meeting on the 16th before Thanksgiving set the final guidelines at that point and be done with it. And we don't need a meeting on the 27th or the 29th. If for whatever set of circumstances, things are not going smoothly and we need another meeting or so, we might have to push setting the final guidelines till after Thanksgiving, but we can't go any later than November 29th. Okay, that, that's why it's that way. We'll, we'll figure that out as we get close more into the budget season. Okay. Um, well, it's good to hear that it doesn't mean we're planning a three-day meeting, Parashar. Sure. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> uh, so that's what really what that meant. So then we, uh, Warren opens on December 2nd. Uh, we have a regular and a final and a guideline meeting. December, we set the final guidelines at that point. Um, we revise the proposal. We will get the review, revise the proposed budget. If we have to shift the guidelines, we can do that. And then to the extent that we need to vote on a warrant article to shift to electronic format, that would be the date we'd have to do that. And so it could actually make it into the warrant. Okay. So I think the 14th, that's just a typo, right? Because you've, you've already set the final guidelines. Yeah, this yeah. this this one might be the typo here yeah, yeah. on the 14th. Yeah, that was not done. Okay. Um, but we may change them to the extent that we hear the close to final budgets. If we, if we need to change them, we change them at that point, right? Um, placeholder on the 18th, another one in the middle of February, and then we get into the public hearings that we have to do. The reason this is highlighted in yellow, I, traditionally, I think it's been the town and CPC. And then the schools have their own night. I'm kind of suggesting that maybe we try to put those two together. Um, I'll talk to Carmen. I don't think she signed on, but I'll talk to Carmen to see if there's a reason why we did that or didn't do that. And we'll, we'll figure that out. So that's a TBD. Um, and then an inter another sort of yellow item to check with Carmen. The deadline for recommendations on the articles is the 27th. Um, <clears throat> that is literally three days after the last of our public hearings may not have a whole lot of time. So I'm, I'm going to try to suggest to her, give us until the 29th, which is Friday. So we can collect ourselves on that Thursday if necessary and go through the articles and, and provide recommendations. So that's a TBD as well. Uh, what is not a TBD 
is me handing the gavel off on the 25th, hopefully to Eric or somebody else on the committee. <laughs> Looking forward to that already. Wow. What, no schedule for 25? <laughs> Three year projections. <laughs> there you go. Who's lined up? Uh, You're so going to be sending this out to us, right? It's already, it was it in the meeting packet? Yeah, it, yes. it was in the meetings packet. A couple adjustments. We <laughs> made a few tweaks, so we'll send them out. But also, more importantly, all the meetings will that are determined will be also in your calendars. Okay, we'll send out the final version. This was in the packet. There were okay, there was a few tweaks to it after the fact, okay? That Thanksgiving three-day, a three- or four-day meeting was. Today. Yes, because of uh, the town meeting, because I had sent out before we got the just dates and stone. Okay, good. Um, do we have any this questions? Will be loaded up to our website. It will be lo it will be loaded up to the website, the revised version, and we will keep it as record. So as we get closer and some of the dates need adjusting, for members of the public, we'll adjust them. Gail will Gail or Julie will basically adjust our calendars appropriately. Cool. Okay. Um, minutes, meeting minutes. We have none. We're going to, if I may, yeah. if we're going to recommend pulling them. Something happened, unfortunately, between the first upload of the packet and the second, such that they're not clear in the final packet that so was that. uploaded. So the recommendation is to pull them and put them forth for the next meeting. Anyone who looked at the first packet, they were they were fine. Something happened between the first and second packet. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, public comment. No yes. comment on our meeting. Uh, Linda and Mary are the only members of the public that I see here. You're good. Linda, no comments there. Going once, going twice, and gone. Correspondence. Do we have oh, correspondence? Oh, who's raising their hand? I Linda. can't see. Oh, Linda, go ahead, please. Um. <laughs> Quite an organization meeting. I, I just hope that the select board is going to be ready to, for that early date that you set for a joint meeting with you. I'm sorry, I was distracted trying to stop the share. Can you repeat that again? Um, I said uh, quite an organizational meeting you've had tonight. I'm just uh, hoping that the select board will be ready for that conversation that you've set for, is it July? Early July? Yes. June, actually, next month. I'm looking at Mary because she's the liaison and we had had a brief conversation about it. I'm assuming it's sharing goals. Yes. yes. Mary's nodding her head, yes. She's optimistic. Okay, good. Linda, Linda I'm assuming it's going to be sharing goals. And I believe we have um, a schedule to do our goals in that time frame. So I think we'll be okay. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, and no other public comment. Do we have correspondence or review? And uh, most of the no. correspondence were some, the information you shared out as part of the breakfast as well for the board and committee volunteer appreciation event that everybody should have received as well as any departing members received that. Um, and then the housing round table that Elizabeth Hughes asked us to distribute. Yeah, and they that mentions us there. So there's an assumption that we're attending, it sounds like. Is that on the on the calendar there? When when is that? June 7th? I forget it's when June that is. June Monday, 5th. June 5th. But right. How did Are it we we're invited to it, right? We're is invited, that right? you're um that they're in Invited and saved the date. So yeah, yeah. So and yeah. I kind of viewed that as individual finance committee members versus a finance committee okay. meeting. That's I'm sorry? a select board meeting then. So I don't think they'll be attending. Well, it looks like the MBTA community is only plus uh it, yeah. housing. So, yeah. right. so the planning board liaison and our housing liaison, I think would be yeah. Yeah. Somebody should be at it because they're going to talk I'll about. I'll probably be zooming into it. Yeah, there you go. Thank okay. you, and you can report back. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I any well, we can't discuss anything else because that's not on the agenda. So, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. So moved. Adjourned. <laughs>